So this is part two, desperate for a change. So we left off that this woman with the issue of blood had exhausted all possible options. Nothing was getting any better for her. She was fed up with feeling tired and weak all the time. She refused to let that opportunity pass her by. Jesus was in town, and she was bound and determined to get to him any way she could. She would have to take the risk. Verse 21. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Picture this. Here comes this woman. She's pushing past a mob of people impolitely and aggressively making her way towards Jesus. Faith was at the forefront of her mind. She already believed it would be done. She was not questioning God. She was fully convinced. If I could just, if I could just, if I could just grab a hold, if I could just touch his robe, if I could just get my hands firmly fixed on the hem of it, for just one moment, even on just a tassel, I will be healed. I will be whole. I will be cleansed. I will be well. How does Jesus respond? Was he angry at her lack of candor? Her, first, her forceful approach, maybe. The fact that she shouldn't have even been there at all? No. Verse 22, but Jesus turned around. He faced her. He saw her. He recognized her. He acknowledged her. He looked right at her. Jesus turned around. Hallelujah. And when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer. Notice how he came with an encouraging word, not condemnation, not impatience or a shaming remark. No, he came with love and compassion. He came with gentleness. He was moved by her faith. He did not treat her like everyone else. He did not cast her aside. He wasn't deterred by her condition or appearance. He said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. He didn't address her like a stranger. Pay attention to that right there. To her knowledge, this was the first time they were meeting. He said, daughter. He greeted her as one of his own, his child, his beloved. How can this be? Why would he say such things? The Bible says, hallelujah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is Jeremiah 1, 5. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Sanctified means I set you apart. Hallelujah. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 18 says this you formed my inward parts other versions say my inmost being you knitted me together in my mother's womb verse 14 i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made so although this woman was just meeting jesus for the first time it was her faith that changed their relationship dynamic she was no longer a stranger to him she was his child she was his daughter. She had always been his. She was just coming to that realization. She, he knew her already because he is the lover and the creator of her soul. He formed her. He knit her together in her mother's womb. He knows her better than anyone. He knows her better than she knows herself. Five minutes prior to that encounter, they were strangers. In the same way, those of us who profess Jesus Christ as not only our Savior, but our Lord. Lord over all things concerning us. We're once strangers to the promise. Estranged from the one who gave us life and breath. That woman wasn't just miraculously made well and healed of a blood disorder she had been battling for 12 years. No, no, she came alive that day. She came alive. Some of you think you're alive just because your heart is pumping blood, but you're about to come alive in Christ. You're about to be born again, made new. You're about to be transformed in a moment from darkness to light, death to life, wrath to redemption. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. And you he made alive. 
who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world what does that mean you were following the crowd you were adopted adapting to culture you were doing what was popular and trending you were conformed to the ways of the world a world the bible says satan the prince of the power of the air now controls and is running he has temporary dominion over it for the moment until his time runs out and he is cast into the lake of fire you were following him you were drunk on enticement and the allure of all he offers, but God's promises are far better. And you he made alive in every sense of the word. He pulled you out of that intoxicating poison and into his marvelous light. He adopted you as his own, his most prized possession, the apple of his eye. You are now a citizen of heaven, seated with Christ in heavenly places, hallelujah, a royal priesthood. You who according to Ephesians 2 verse 3 once conducted yourself in the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath what does that mean it means that you were once so consumed by selfishness that you did whatever appealed to you no matter who it hurt no matter how they were affected it means that you indulged in the very things god hates loathes and despises and yet with a mustard seed of a very tiny seed of faith you he made alive which is the only way to enter into his kingdom you must be born again born of his spirit the same spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead jesus christ the holy son of god the second person of the godhead the invisible god made visible god and god incarnate from the dead after being buried in a tomb he raised you to new life in him. You were dead in your trespasses. You whose innate nature rebels against his commands and instruction. He tells us in verse 8 that this was done by his grace alone. That there is nothing we have done or could do to be made right in his sight. It is the faith God gave us as a gift that justifies us before a holy God who has no sin in him, who does not lie, whose heart is pure and blameless. We believed in Jesus Christ with our hearts and made the confession with our lips to acknowledge our belief in the gospel and affirm it and we became his, seated with him in heavenly places. We became ashamed of the sin we once reveled in, celebrated, and enjoyed the power of sin was broken. By grace we have been saved and it is no works of our own. So we have no reason to brag or boast in our own godliness or holiness. We have none without Jesus Christ. Our hearts were sick, infected by the disease of sin. And now little by little, glory to glory, he is circumcising our hearts, tearing out at the root every corrupt, wicked, evil, unclean, and defiling thing. Verse 10, for he, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Please note, we are incapable of such works without the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God's grace, his unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, kindness, goodness, faithfulness is transformative. It is not you doing the transforming work nor could you. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory, who changes your demeanor, attitude, perception, thought life, heart, motivations, motives, intentions, reasoning, and justifications. He changes them all. This inner work is necessary for the work he has for you. There are no shortcuts. This road is difficult, but it's the only way. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind and the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. Not our change in attire, lack of makeup on our face, head covering, refraining from eating certain meats. There, 
there is a difference between our own efforts to meet God's holy requirement, which never works, and surrendering to the convictions of the precious Holy Spirit. There is a form of godliness, a dry, dead, lifeless religion that changes no one and offers nothing but condemnation and confusion. The Bible says there is a form of godliness that people have, but it denies God's power. They deny God's power. They get uneasy around the move of the Holy Spirit. They turn their noses up at anyone who doesn't meet their righteous requirements. Their righteous requirements but that is not and will never be the way fix your face like a flint on christ follow jesus ask to know him for yourself if you don't already ask him to teach you his ways not man-made tradition ask him to show you his heart and make you more like him follow christ he is the way